Google is going to give search users AI-generated answers in a move that is expected to change quite a lot of the dynamics of how we use the internet. So rather than links to question typed into the search platform, AI will come up with a text-generated answer. In a, it's a sort of an overhaul to the product that already made Google a tech giant. This gives you a bit of an idea of how it works. Um, Sissy Sayo is the vice president at Google and the general manager for the Google Assistant and BARD. That's Google's equivalent to ChatGPT. Well, uh, yesterday she demonstrated how the AI system BARD would use Google Maps. Help me find colleges with animation programs in Pennsylvania. Okay, great. That's a good list of schools. Now, to see where these are, I might now say, show these on a map. Here, Bard's going to use Google Maps to visualize where the schools are. Let's find out more. Joining us now is Andrew Ebon, futurist and the president of Octopus TV. Andrew, good morning. Uh, good morning, Rosie. Lovely to join you as always. So Google really is at top of the, I mean, top of the league tables in terms of uh, how we use the internet and search engines. But clearly, uh, it's seen the threat coming from Microsoft and ChatGPT, and it's taken action. Oh, absolutely. It's an uh, alphabet. The owners of um, uh, Google are basically they're in a race with their competitors to expand and integrate AI into all of their existing and new products and they've announced over the last few days all sorts of things like official email accounts are going to be highlighted with blue verification ticks you're going to have uh, basically getting rid of a password so you have a new pass key login using your face and fingerprints um but the biggest announcement and these, it's always that sort of yeehaw moment at these wonderful conferences uh, at mount view california where they take you through all of the different ways they're going to do so what they did is they introduced uh, all sorts of new products like the google pixel fold and the uh, uh, and the various uh, um, various other things as well. But the key elements was how they're going to integrate AI into their products. And Gmail, for example, is going to be able to write more detailed emails that may help you get refunds on cancelled flights. And Google Bard, which is the company's own generative AI, will integrate itself into many different ways. So, for example, you can do in-depth search results, and it will be able to answer inquisitive questions about uh, uh, using the generative AI to write detailed answers, and you highlighted one of those in, in your introduction. But it also do things like in-depth product results. So if you're looking for a new bicycle, for example, uh, it will be able to make give you recommendations and list of features and so on and so forth. Um, they've also got this new conversational mode. So at the end of each generated text, it will have a series of follow-up questions, and you can select a, a particular topic. So it's there to guide you through this sort of thing. Um, also, okay, rather, Andrew, rather fun stuff, it does the... the yeah. The thing I want to ask you, though, is we just had that urgent sort of alarm. Someone at Google resigned and they said, look, AI is traveling at, at a pace that is terrifying. We need to put at least a six month hold on this. Uh, Google doesn't seem to be doing anything of the sort. Yes, it was Elon Musk and various others who called for a six month hold because they said it's rather what Stephen Hawking said. It's our greatest human achievement, but also the biggest existential threat. And Jeffrey Hinton, who was the chap who was called the godfather of AI, he was the chap who resigned from uh, Google. Uh, basically, he was worried about the progress that's been made. The advances have been far more seismic than even he anticipated. Uh, but he was also in his uh, mid-70s, so he was due for retirement anyway. Um, and he did say that Google had behaved very responsibly, but he couldn't really criticise the advance of AI, obviously, whilst he was still an employee of Google. So what we need to do is we need to have safeguards in place. But at the same time, if we do have a moratorium and pause for six months, then places like China and so on and so forth will continue their development. And uh, it would be a mistake. And I have to agree with Bill Gates on this, is that it would be a mistake to, to put this whole thing on pause. What we need to do is understand the technology, but also make sure that appropriate safeguards are in place, not just for privacy, but for things like copyright and so on and so forth, which I've spoken about previously. Andrew, thank you so much. Andrew Eborn is a broadcaster, futurist and the president of Octopus TV, talking to us about the dynamics of how our biggest and largest and most powerful search engine, AI, uh, gets, uh, not AI, Google, <laughs> gets AI integrated into its search bar feature. It's